What is up, everybody? This is the LZ TV Zoom because I'm in double man, whatever. Yes, I'm a little hyped up on Coca Cola and I'm a little cold. But now it's time for the Survivor Series predictions for tonight's pay per view. Including the pre show, we got seven matches on the card. Gonna try to break them through down as easy as possible compared to the Hell in a Cell predictions. And one quick note, I don't know when I'm going to fully review the pay-per-view. Due to work tonight, I'm only going to be able to see the first hour and a half of the show. Like, the first half before I got to leave for work, so... I've got to find some other way to watch the second half by the time I get done with work. I don't know if I can find it, a, find it on Daily Motion. I don't know if there's a replay site. If anybody has information for that, please let me know, because I want to get this reviewed as soon as possible instead of having to wait until the DVD comes out. Let's break down what's going to happen at the show and what my predictions are. Kickoff show, Kofi Kingston versus The Miz. The Miz finally reverted back as a heel after turning on Kofi Kingston this past Monday night on Raw in a tag team match against the Y family. And thank God they finally turned Miz back into a freaking heel because the face run was just a flop. Pretty much like I explained in yesterday's live stream. This one, obviously, The Miz is going to win. Kofi has not been built up at all. He's just been... It's just like a plane ride going nowhere. I mean, Kofi... It's, it's impossible to see if he's got a future in WWE. He's just been losing almost every match he's had over the last year. The Miz turning heel. If they want to plan something big, they got to start building him up. So this means heel turn. Got to come up with a win for your first victory as a heel. Well, during this run. Then match number one, you got Big Show versus Randy Orton for the WWE Championship. Nobody gives a crap about this match, and quite frankly, I don't either. I mean, seriously, Big Show goes through this whole lawsuit and getting fired and the crybaby thing and then gets a title shot? Really? Does WWE honestly expect people to believe that Big Show could win this title? I mean, the title's been jumping and changing hands nonstop throughout this year. And with Big Show, his longest reign with the title was like, when he had ever held the title, was like, what, a month and a half to two months? I mean, seriously, this guy's never held the WWE title for that long. He's not going to win it against Randy Orton. Match number two, you get an Intercontinental Championship rematch. Biggie Langston against Curtis Axel. Biggie just won the title. There's no way they're putting it back on Curtis Axel this fast. I mean, seriously, if... From what I heard, WWE wants to get ready to start pushing Big E big time coming up within the next few months. If they're going to do that, they can't have him drop the title so fast, because otherwise it'll be like, why put the... It'll be one of those, why'd they do this kind of situations? Like, why did they put the title on him? They were just going to take him off again less than a week later, so Big E, you're keeping that gold. Then you got a 7-on-7 seven -seven Tag Team Divas Elimination Match. Yes. One of two Survivor Series elimination matches. The Total Divas against the Non-Divas. For Due to the hype of the show and everything, and WWE's non-stop promotion about it, you gotta have the Total Divas win. I mean, if you really... I think what they might do is have Natalia last, like, get the win by last eliminating AJ, and f finally start building up a potential match against AJ for the Divas Championship, because Natalia looks like the only legitimate threat that AJ is going to have against any of the faces on the roster. I mean, come on, the Bella Twins? Nope, they've had their chances. JoJo and Eva Marie? Ha! And then whoever the other two people are outside of Natalia, nobody gives a crap. Then you got a next, next one, you got the 5-on-5 five five tag team match, Survivor Series elimination match. Cody Rhodes, Golas, The Usos, and the returning Rey Mysterio against the Wyatt fan, against the Shield, and the Real Americans. This one's going to be a little hard to predict. I mean, I know Rey Mysterio just returned, but it says like he might have returned a bit too early because you could tell on his way to the ring that he was limping around trying to come down to the ring. People noticed it after Raw this past week. So I have a feeling we're going to have the heels win, so I think the Shield is going to remain. There have been people have been speculating if somebody's going to be turning face. We could see it after the match or something, like some kind of power struggle or something, like of everybody being like, yes, we won, like, I got the victory, fame and glory, and then you get, like, some kind of shoving contest, we might finally see somebody turning face, but nothing's guaranteed yet. It's, it's a crazy thing. Then you got John Cena versus Alberto Del Rio World Heavyweight Championship rematch. John Cena recently suckered in Alberto Del Rio with the whole sling. 
sling on his left arm after the attack from the previous week. You had the non-stop fighting, both men beating each other down. You had the whole arm wrestling thing, Cena through a table, you know the drill. But obviously, if WWE really wants to rebuild that prestige to the title, they gotta keep it on Cena. I mean, Del Rio was just not a good champion. Nothing really stood out to make him a good champion to begin with. He wasn't handled like a real-world champion. Sure, he was beating people, but like I said before, not high enough people to make himself look good as a legit world champion. The people he was facing, that would have worked if he was like Intercontinental or United States Champion, but he was never he never started that low on the card before. He jumped in, <laughs> rise to the top. Like I say, keep the belt on Cena. No point in putting it on Del Rio so soon. And then finally, the tag team match of Daniel Bryan and CM Punk against the Y family, Luke Harper and Eric Rowan. Now this one's going to be a little hard to predict. I know that WWE is recently building up the Y family again after suddenly putting them in this feud, tag team feud against CM Punk and Daniel Bryan. This one's going to be a little hard to predict. I'm crossing my fingers that CM Punk and Daniel Bryan win this one. I mean, I know, like, I think they could have some kind of screwy finish to try to keep both sides looking strong instead of having one look strong and then still lose anyway. So I think there might be some kind of weird... I think it might end due to interference by Bray Wyatt to try to keep one side from looking weak by a clean finish. But I mean, I'm... It's a little iffy. If they don't go with that kind of finish, then I think CM Punk and Daniel Bryan are going to win, but still somehow make the Y family look strong anyway. So that's my predictions for Survivor Series tonight. Comment down below your predictions for Survivor Series. Like I said, I'm going to be able to catch the first half of the show, but not the second half, so don't expect an immediate review throughout this week until I see everything else. So with that in mind, folks, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and see ya.